Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. Over here, we do Daz 3D tutorial videos so you get the most out of your own renders. Uh, in the last video that we did, we had a look at how to do three point lighting in a studio setting, and I said that we were going to do a few other videos on going just different lighting settings in different situations uh, just to show different techniques of, of what you can use and apply to your own renders in this video what we're going to do we're going to do a outdoors sunny day image uh, of this you know little warrior woman or a shaman woman that we've got over here in scene uh, and we're going to go through all the little different techniques we can do when doing sun sunny days in outdoor scenes like we can see here now, when it comes to producing sunlight within DAS, we basically got two options. We can use a HDRI, which effectively uses a background image with light and details encoded within that image itself to provide the necessary brightness and luminosity of the sunlight or the, or the environment that's that is modeled on the on the image the other alternative that we can go is with the sun sky environment which is DAS's own internal software jiggery pokery that, that creates light realistic sunlight uh within our scene now they both work very similar with a lot of similar options to them or, or the, certainly the base options are, are very much similar in this example i'm going to use the sun sky model because it's easier and you can just copy the exactly what i've done if you wish and to demonstrate that i'm going to come across to the render settings now on render i'm going initially on the environment mode up top to be in dome and scene but if you've seen a video that i did a few videos back where we can uh turn that into a sun sky environment but keep the ability to use spotlights and other lights in there if we need them then i'm going to do that you'll be able to see a link up in the top right hand corner if you've not seen that video yet but what i'm basically going to do is i'm going to come to the environment map here i'm going to give it a click and i'm going to hit none so even though it still says dome and scene up here, it's now converted over to a sun sky environment. Gives us all the sun sky dials that we can use, but it will still allow us to use spotlights if needed. And I say if needed because generally a lot of the times you don't need any other light other than what's provided by the sun sky. Now, when it comes to, you know, doing an outdoor shot and you're using the sun sky or a HDRI, or something like that there's no real magic source to it it's you've got a sun you've got a source of light and it's just a matter of putting it in the right angle to give you the best result possible uh, there's nothing crazy you can do about it it's, it's very simple to do uh, there are a couple of things however that you shouldn't do and, and that's probably the thing that i can i can talk about in this so if we take what we've got over here now and we come across over to our nvidia iray we've got our little primitive barbarian woman lit up by the sun now we can tell by the shadows where the sun's coming from the shadows are seemingly coming this way if you if you look at a body shadow down here so it's fair to say that the sun is up here somewhere above this you know rocky outcropping at the back here and we can see that it's shining on the top and the back of her head now that can be a perfectly fine setup that we can do with our sun because one of the things that we want to avoid doing uh, with sunlight is shining it directly into our model's face which is probably the opposite of the setup that we've got here so if we were to come across to the dome rotation for instance and come to about i don't know about up here somewhere let's say 227 so what we've got now is more or less the opposite of of what we we had previously when we first put the nvidia preview on we've now got the sun blasting straight in her face uh and it's up above us slightly and, and shining directly in her face and we can tell that by looking at the shadows if you look at the shadow under her nose we can see that it's shining downwards directly into her face the problem when you when you shine any light into somebody's face whether it's a, a spotlight a, a point light or, or sunlight like this is it produces very harsh light and ugly shadows now in truth this isn't a bad example but you know i see a lot of people doing images with sunshine where they just shine the light into a model's face and they say there you go the character's lit up you want to always avoid direct light in the face whether it's with the sun or whether it's with the spotlight but the spotlight at least you can do things with that you can't really do much with the sun uh, it's a big bright burning ball of fire in the sky and very very bright and very intense so it's going to produce harsh shadows and, and really intense lighting good lighting consists of a mixture between light and shadow okay it's not just light that's important it's the shadow that's also important as well whether it's falling across a body a face an object a scene anything like that shadows are just as important as what uh, as what light is and so what you want to do with your light certainly in an outdoor scene like this is you want to angle it you want to find an angle that 
you know gives the best possible results that you can get uh, there's no skill to it really there's just doing things and, and and using your own perception to say you know what that looks good that that seems to do the job so what you want to do in this situation all i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to rotation take it back to zero so the light's now coming in behind her and i'm just going to start skipping through the dome rotation just looking for something that works that makes me think you know what that, that, that hits a face well it creates a nice mixture of shadows and a nice mixture of light that dance across the face or dance across the, the model as a whole that produces a good little mix-up now i'm in a kind of a decent area here where i am at the moment let's go down a little bit what we've got at this point we've got the sunlight probably coming in this direction so the left side of her face is slightly lit up the right side of her face is in shadow we're catching a few little highlights on her arm and on her legs and we're getting a nice little blend of light and shadow that creates a little bit of dynamic dynamicism uh, to our model uh, you might argue and say, say that she's still a little bit in too much of a shadow which we can deal with that in the next example that i'm going to show you but uh you know, we're getting a nice little mixture there of light and shadow across our bottle, across our model's body and face, rather than this dark, you know, this really darkness from when it's coming totally from behind, or the really intense light that's hitting her right from the front and giving no shadow. Uh, so we want to be looking for that nice mixture of light and shadow. And again, this applies to every light and setup that you do. It's not just outdoors. It's just it, it's more noticeable and more important uh, in an outdoor shot like this. Uh, another thing that I want to just highlight at this point, it, it's nothing to do with lighting, it's just something that's generally you should really be doing in an outdoor scene. If we look at our model here, she's up on the rock, we see a lot of stuff behind her. You know, we're looking way back over here into this little valley area and you've got all the rocks over there and everything like this. You know, the purpose of an image when we do an image like this is that we want our our viewer to look at where we want them to look. We want them to look at our model. There's nothing going on over in this back corner here. It's just there, the, the shadow and the light. It's just there. It's just a thing. We don't want to draw our viewers' eyes to that point. We want them to look at our model. And so what you need to do in an outdoor scene, because you've got certainly when you've got a lot of space behind you, is you've got to introduce depth of field into it. And you want to be able to separate out your model, the, the thing that you want people to focus on, out of the background. And we do that with by using depth of field. Now, I'm not going to go into depth of field here, how we do it and how we don't do it. There's a video up in the top uh, right corner there uh, where I've done depth of field before. But what I've got on my camera, I've already got you know my depth of field set up that i want to do up on the distance and the f-stops and all this stuff and positioned everything right and all i'm going to do i'm just going to turn it on and you'll hopefully see what i see when the character almost jumps out from the background and becomes overall a better image and a better visualization of our model so if i now just turn the depth of field on can you see how she kind of now jumps out of the background and you can see now this separation between her and what's going on in the background as i said there's nothing going on over there we don't need to be able to see that we don't need to be able to to get our viewer looking at that we want them looking at our model so make sure we're certainly on outdoor shots make sure you're using depth of field because it'll make your images far far better just by including it and it's very easy and simple to do just check out that video that i've got up in the top right hand corner now here we've moved our model into a different part of the environment and again we've played around with the sunlight to get some sort of light and that we want. I kind of like this the way that it is but of course what's noticeable is that despite the background being lit up to somewhat she is very much in shadow and shade uh, and not really great because we can't really make out the details that we've got. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to be able to light up the front of our model uh, but trying to keep all the sunlight in place as well because obviously that's our main light source now there are two ways that we can do this right and the first way that we can do it is we can use uh, tone mapping if you've not used tone mapping before if we come into the render settings over here and come down to tone mapping these are effectively ways that we can you know mess around with our camera and you know the way that it takes in light and the way that we do things with it and the important thing that we need to know for this example is we need to look at f-stop film iso as well works very similar but if you've ever played around with a camera you can mess around with exposure values and you know 
film ISOs and f-stops and all this type of thing to be able to basically increase the amount of light that gets taken in by the camera you know you open up everything within the camera all the light comes charging in and then you were able to uh, brighten up an image naturally just by allowing more light in so what we want to do in this situation is we want to brighten up our image without whiting out all this background and, and, and being too overexposed and so what we're going to do is we're going to fiddle with f-stop now if we raise f-stop higher things will go darker so if i was to click on f-stop and just say put 20 in there you'll see that everything goes darker with it the camera's not allowing as much light into it as, as what it could be so if we go back to 8 which is the default we go back to our default image now what we need to do therefore is go low so if we were to go into one and put a one f-stop in there everything gets massively overexposed everything gets too bright obviously not good enough so what we need to do in this situation is gradually raise the f-stop so we'll go up to two it's bright still but not as bright now if you are noticing as well you can notice that the uh, exposure value up here is changing every time we change the f-stop here so if we then go to three how does three look getting there we're still you know a bit over bright in the background certainly we're getting a bit of white out on the rocks here but we're getting into a realms of where we need to be if we go into a four we're probably yeah almost where we need to be i would say uh still maybe a little bit of white out in the rocks there so what i'll do i'll now go to 4.5 over there and we probably land right in the happy valley of where we want to be we haven't changed the light we haven't messed around with the environment tab or the sun sky things all that we've done is we've opened up the camera to allow a little bit more light to come into into it from the scene itself and that has naturally brightened up the image in the way that we want it to be so now we've got the nice bright background and we've got our character no longer in shadow and shade and we can see all the details and all the effects that are there on a skin and everything part of it which is great which is exactly what we want to see what we're going to do now is going to look at the other way we can do this which uh so what i'm going to do myself i'm going to reset f-stop and we'll start again if you remember from the three point lighting system we've got three main lights the main light a rim light and a fill light uh the fill light is the one that we're going to be talking about here because the fill light is there to fill in the shadows to give a little bit of more lightness and allow us to control uh, the, the depth of the shadows that fall across our model or in our scene so what we're going to do we're going to insert a little bit of a fill light uh, in here instead of doing it with a tour map and we'll put a little bit of a fill light in you will get a little bit a different result at the end of it so it's important to include it so what i'm going to do i'm going to come across to uh, our perspective view now i've already positioned our perspective view where i want it uh, just slightly off at an angle from from where she is uh, and i'm going to come up to create and i'm going to come to new spotlight and give it a click and i'm going to do the apply active tra viewport transform to put the 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 light where our perspective view is click accept and that shows that the light's being put in place now if we come back to camera and then we go back to nvidia iray we get our shaded character uh stood with the sunlight dropping in behind her so what we're going to do we're going to come down with our spotlight selected we're going to come down to lights and we're going to turn it the light into a rectangle again if you don't know why it's all about uh softening light that comes in we can't really do it with sunshine and things but we can certainly do it with spotlights again there's a link up in the top right hand corner there if you need to know why i'm doing this and what i'm going to do i'm going to make the height of this rectangle 200 centimeters and i'm going to make the width of it 100. why 200? 200 centimeters is about six foot what six foot six something like that uh so it's it's going to be a light that's the full body length of our character the full height of our character and all i'm going to do then once we've got that set up i'm going to come down to luminosity and i'm just going to start increasing it in incremental steps until we get where we want to be so if i put it up to fifteen thousand we lighten our character up a little bit but not much now remember all we're trying to do here is brighten the image we're not trying to light the character with this light we're just trying to brighten the image somewhat so we'll add another zero on there and see where we get to now we've probably gone a little bit too far because i could have just mentioned there we're just trying to brighten the image not light the character you know there's a subtle difference there between the two so instead of fifteen we we'll knock it down 
50,000, we'll just go to 100,000 now. Maybe still lighting the character rather than anything else. We'll go down another 10,000. You know, there's a lot of fiddling about with this and you might have to mess about to get it right. Uh, we're kind of in the range now, okay, where the light is just brightening the character up rather than lighting her. And, the, you know, it's important that we do that because we don't want this light to overwhelm the natural sunlight that we're getting. Uh, you might have to play around with it a little bit more. I mean, I could maybe go a little bit lower in, in truth looking at it now. But that's all we're trying to do, just brighten the image. Now, one of the benefits of using a spotlight doing this rather than using tone mapping is we keep the background with the original colour that we had. But if you notice on a skin, we're starting to pick up a few highlights that the spotlight is managing to do. I've got a wet skin over the top of her. Uh, when we did tone mapping, we didn't pick these highlights up. Uh, but using a spotlight, we're now picking those highlights up a little bit just to add a little bit of more, you know, dynamic light into the character, add a little bit more life to a skin. Uh, you know, and as I mentioned, we probably could go a little bit lower there with the brightness of the light, but that's fine. It's good enough for this demonstration and this example. Uh, and what we could also do if we wanted to, we could come down to temperature and possibly reduce the temperature down to about 5,000, which is more akin to sunlight uh six and a half thousand is probably at the top end of sunlight so if we just drop that down a little bit it'll probably just give the light a little bit of a yellowy tint uh that's going into a just you know just lowering the temperature a little bit sort of moving it from more white into more yellowy uh and it now kind of matches the the light that's coming in from the sun we brighten the character up and she's no longer in any in, in any shadow or shade, and we can start picking out the details. So there we go. That is uh, the best ways to, in my mind, to approach doing daylight, outdoor lighting. Remember that you what you don't want to override the sunlight. Uh, so if you are going to be using a spotlight like this, just do it enough to brighten the character up. Make use of tone mapping if you want to. I mean, I could probably still use tone mapping on here, but not so much. Maybe I could just drop it a little bit to brighten it a little bit more you know it's just a combination of these things to play around with them to get the best result that you want uh, and of course certainly with outdoor scenes put a little depth of field in there because you want the character to stand out from the background uh, so there you go that's doing an outdoor scene uh Sun, sunny day outdoor scene uh, what I'll do in probably the next video I'll maybe do a, an outdoor scene in a dull overcast day rather than a sunny day to, to see how you can bring those images out but hopefully you've got something out of this video uh, if so then drop us a like down below as that tells YouTube that, that I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am uh, share the video subscribe if you haven't already and if you've got any questions or comments whether it's about this video or any other video or any other topic in Daz, just drop them down below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.